Hey guys, this is Vlad, back with a very interesting product this week. Over the past month, I've had the chance to test out the Unit 1 helmet in a combination of skiing and biking. I've really come to appreciate the audio and calling features of the Unit 1. I also reached out to Unit 1 and they mentioned that they're having an end of season sale. So if after this review you're interested, uh, check out the link in the description below. I've tried using many different methods to find the perfect audio solution for the slopes. The best solution I had previously was wireless headphones with audio pass-through such as the Bragi Dash or the Samsung Galaxy Buds. I've even tried dedicated kits like the drop-in wired audio chips for burn helmets. Getting back into actually using the Unit 1, what originally drew me to the helmet was the fact that you can easily control the volume and the playback with your gloves still on. I really despise having to take my gloves off in the extreme cold to then have to pull my phone out to change a track or answer a call. Having the large tactile button on the helmet and the rotary knob with the indented grip points is a game changer for ease of use while on the mountain with your gloves on. Over the course of a weekend, I found that I could charge the headphones once with the aux to USB cord, and it would last the full two days. I was using around somewhere between 30 to 40% of the battery each day, only using it in the helmet, which is great as it means I didn't have to take the proprietary charger with me. Connecting to the headset is as simple as any other Bluetooth headset. I would say that overall sound quality is above average, certainly gets loud enough with the 40 millimeter drivers with adequate bass and a healthy mid-range. I comfortably listen to them up to 85% volume with the isolated ear pads and wouldn't want to go much higher than that. I would say the audio quality is comparable to some of the 50 to $100 range over ear Bluetooth headphones I've tried. Speaking of the ear pads, I did find the thinner pads to be a bit more comfortable as they pressed into the upper part of my ear less. And finally, the lowest volume is low enough to have light background music while talking to others regardless of which ear pads you're using. Call quality is solid enough and making a call with the triple tap voice assistant of your choosing and hanging up with one click is very seamless. I think future improvements on a second version, Unit 2, that could take place would be to change the charging method to USB Type-C and also to have a way to charge the helmet without having to remove the headset. I would also like to see another button on the other side of the helmet, perhaps for the dedicated walkie-talkie feature. While having one button works, there are a lot of things to remember in terms of the clicking count. These are all just thoughts, but for what the helmet does already, it is really incomparable to any other product on the market. Overall, I really enjoy using the Unit 1, and I think it will be a staple for me when I'm skiing or snowboarding. I downloaded the Unit 1 app to test the walkie-talkie feature with another phone, and it seemed to work fine. I'll be curious to test the walkie-talkie feature on the helmet to another helmet when my friend's Unit 1 arrives, so perhaps I'll do another video testing that feature specifically. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll also be doing a review next week of the Ravian heated jacket that I'm wearing in some of the video clips in this review, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and stay safe, everyone. And now, here's a full unboxing for those interested. So first opening up the box, we have Don't Leave Music Behind. Here's the actual black unit that we have. And then in the box, we have the accessory bag. Now the way the quad four lock system works is it has these two little levers down here. So this one opens, this one opens, and then the headphones will actually pop right through. You can kind of pivot them out. And now you have a set of standalone headphones, which extend and can be used normally. Now looking into the accessory bag, we have the ear covers, these guys here. So the way these work is you kind of just pop them in.
and this is if you don't want to use audio at all. So, similar to the other one, just kind of pop it in like that, and clamp them in. Now you have ear pads on the inside, and it won't get cold. I suppose you could also leave them off if you wanted some ventilation on a warmer day. Now for the actual headphones, we have the thick ear pads on here, which uh, provide a more immersive experience, but aren't as good if you're trying to hear people around you. Um, and these will actually pop off, rotate that way, slide right off, and then put the thin one on. And likewise for the other one. So now when you uh, have the headset on, you should be able to hear more of your surroundings if you have it on the helmet. I really like the idea of the immersive pads versus the kind of thin pads where you can hear your environment a little bit more. I would say these are perfect for if you're riding solo and you just really want to get into the music and, and you don't really need to hear much uh, outside. And then these are great if you want to, if you're constantly going to be like playing and pausing to listen to your friends or say if you're going into the woods and you need to hear a little bit better, um, these uh, thinner guys are, are great for that. Then up next for the helmet, we have the goggle clip, which as you can see here, it's very easily labeled. There is a little plastic that kind of situates in there. You really have to apply some pressure to kind of pop it in, but you'll get a nice audible click when you do. And then there is a screw here, so you can just tighten that up until it's fully tightened, just like so. And actually when you put the screw in, it expands the plastic in there so that it won't come out. And then we have the charging cable, which is just basically an aux to a USB, which plugs into the bottom here with this little silicon uh, waterproofing guard here. So plug that in there. And this is a proprietary charger system, and then you can plug it into USB. And probably takes a, a few hours to charge up, I know. Similarly, they include a 2.5 to a 3.5, so if you did want to uh, you know, plug in your headphones and properly use them to listen to wired music. You could definitely do that, just like so. You get a direct line. So in here you have the full uh, overview and user manual. At first when I had the helmet on I was just I was looking down at it like this and just trying to press these and it didn't really do much, um, but you gotta press both of them at the same time. Kinda set it to the biggest setting here. And, uh, but that is all explained in here. It's important to note that when you put the headphones back in, you want to put them on their minimum size. Then you just kind of line this up with the text on the bottom. And then they, they'll go in that way, for example. So here is the kind of play pause, double tap, triple tap, quad tap turns it off, five taps pairing mode, six taps the whole reboot. And then if you just press and hold, it will record message. Now lastly in the bag we have two little stickers. And finally in the bag you have a little travel satchel, which is pretty large. Um, should fit all your accessories, um, so maybe some gloves, some, some goggles in there. And it's got a little cinch strap too with the, uh, the button cinch. Um, kind of a microfiber material, so pretty soft, shouldn't damage anything, or your goggles if you put them inside. And that's about it inside the package.